I'm so glad to be with you again. Uh, there's just nothing more wonderful than being with brothers and sisters, even if it's through the uh, electronic medium of uh, internet. We thank God for it because otherwise we'd have to find some other way to uh, uh, share with you and at the same time practice social distancing. Well, what a terminology, uh, but we appreciate uh, what we are, we are able to do to help the people of God around the world. Thank you so much for uh, listening to what we've had to say and what we've done thus far. We appreciate you uh, doing the best you can. We know that you are under pressure and uh, under some stress, but uh, let's keep doing the work of Jesus Christ, whatever that means. Let's keep doing that. I want to just, uh, just say a couple of three words. Uh, I am very, very happy that uh, I'm able to preach to you, to preach the gospel, share things that are encouraging. We want to do that. My wife and I are very, very concerned about it. She is as concerned as I am about it, and is, is always coming up with ideas uh, for us to reach out to you. Thank you for responding. We appreciate those responses. It says that you are listening out there. One thing we found as uh, we have lived out this uh, coronavirus, we have learned that we are a real body. Now, we know we have understood that mentally, but we are understanding it on a different level. Because we have not been able to meet, we are feeling a spiritual separation, as it were. And uh, it is hurting to us. So many believers have made a reference to that and have said they just miss the body of Christ. They miss brothers and sisters. And so we want you to know that we miss you too and that what you are going through, I believe, is a good lesson that God wants us to understand that we are irrevocably linked together. We are in, uh, a part of each other, and I thank God for that. I want to encourage you during this uh, week, this is... Uh, uh, our week we call generally, some people call it Holy Week, or it is the, the week of Jesus' passion when he came into Jerusalem uh, to confront the, uh, the Jewish hierarchy and to let them know that, uh, that he was actually the Messiah. He was their Messiah. He let them know in no uncertain words. And so this is a very, very important time. As you heard Pastor Jackson say earlier, that we call this, we prefer to call it, um, we are actually adamant um, about it. We call it resurrection. It's the most amazing time, or Passover, or first fruits. Those are the words we use for it, and we don't use the common terminology of Easter, but we do use those, those uh, very emphatic words, uh, resurrection, resurrection Sunday, change the whole world. And uh, this is why we can preach the gospel to you, is because of who Jesus is and what Jesus has done. And so we preach the gospel to you without fear or without any uncertainty. Jesus is who he says he is. I've entitled this message, Yes, We Can. Yes, We Can. And I'm thinking as a backdrop, uh, the coronavirus that is running rampant uh, throughout the world, not just our, our nation, our, uh, our state or our city, but throughout the world, this coronavirus is wreaking havoc uh, in one of our nations where we've ministered. And we have ministered there uh, 226 people in that one church we ministered in uh, have coronavirus. Uh, they, they have it. And uh, it, it, in that particular uh, church, the pastor died, his wife has died, his associate, one of his associates died, and uh, the son is now recovering very well. And we, sure, we just sent out blessings to uh, that young man who is a, also a pastor in the church. And we have uh, 10 uh, key leaders in that church that died also. Uh, and so this coronavirus is real, but we know that Jesus Christ uh, is able to do whatever he needs to do. He can do, he can heal us or he can keep us from it. I would rather he just kept us from corona and coronavirus from us. But my, my message is, yes, we can. It, it, that is the backdrop, is, is where we are today in real time dealing with uh, a, a pestilence that has gone through the, the world wreaking havoc. I want to encourage you, and uh, the, the psalmist said, a thousand shall fall at my side, or at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, my right hand, but it shall not come nigh us. It will not come near us. And that is what we are believing. We know that Jesus can heal people, but we'd rather not get sick. And if, that, if, if I have the option of, of getting healed or not getting sick, I take not getting sick. 
So we want to speak that into you, speak that over you, with great confidence in Jesus. Let me read the words of the Apostle, the Apostle Paul. I think they are just amazing words from Philippians chapter 4, verses 10 through 13. Uh, Philippians chapter 4, verses 10 through 13. I'm reading this for, for your benefit today, for your enjoyment, and uh, that you might abound to great things. Paul writes, But I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now, at last, your care for me has flourished again. Though you surely did care, but you lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. Uh, we used to make the joke uh, that, that we know now that Paul is not a Texan because he had learned whatever state he was not to be, to, uh, be content. And we said no, no Texan can be content in other, any other state. But let me get back to the seriousness of this text. He says, where I've learned in whatever state I am, I am to be content. I know how to be abased, and I know how to abound everywhere and in all things, everywhere and in all things. I have learned, I have been instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So in this text, we find the apostle is very excited about the church of Philippi. They have now be, uh, found an opportunity to bless him, to support him. Paul never uh, begged or asked anybody to support him. God had to place it on their hearts. And uh, we believe the same way. We believe that we, we lay, lay, lay the need out there. And then if God moves your heart, then you do it. Otherwise, we just leave it alone because we believe that, that our God, our God shall supply all of our need and the needs of those that we are, are ministering to. He will supply by his riches in glory, which is Christ Jesus. So let's look at what Paul had, uh, has learned and what I have learned and what I trust you have learned. When Paul says, uh, what I have learned, what he means is he has learned, he has come to know, he has acquired something by use and practice, by both use and practice, which means is that when the Word of God comes to you, if you don't, as it were, make use of it, if you don't use it, if you don't practice it, you've not learned it. And this is what Paul wants you to know. I would say that this is a, an opportune time in the midst of this coronavirus, this COVID-19, for us to know what we have learned from the Lord. If we are in a state of panic, if we are in this state of uncertainty, fear has gripped us, and we are unable to move, we are paralyzed by it, we are counseled by the fear, then we have not learned very much. And so we, that doesn't mean that we kick you out and you're no good. What it means is we have to teach you again. We have to labor uh, in, in the love of Jesus to teach you again. So, so Paul is saying that he has learned by use and practice. I want you to, to keep that in your mind. But what had he learned? He had learned to be content. He had learned uh, not to be anxious. So anxiety did not grip Paul. Paul says that, that when, uh, when he was in Asia, uh, that he was so pressed and, and under stress that, that they even despaired of life. They thought, this is it. This is it. We're not getting out of this. This is it. We're going to go see Jesus. But he says, they had the sentence of death in them. He said, why did they have the sentence of death? He said, so that we would not trust in ourselves, but in God who raises the dead. And so this is our reality. You and I must go through things to know what we have received, what has been inculcated, what we have internalized. And I say, yes, we can. We can go through anything in Christ. We can, we can do all things through Christ. Yes, we can succeed in Christ. Now, so he says, he had learned to be content. So to be content is to live in a state of peacefulness. To live in a state of peacefulness. Regardless of the raging storms, I live in a state of peacefulness. I can remember enduring some of the hurricanes we've had in the uh, Corpus Christi area. 
Corpus Christi and the area. I can remember hearing the wind uh, howling outside as though it was an angry demon. I can remember uh, our house uh, uh, vibrating from the, the roaring of the wind coming uh, by our house, coming down, as it were, from the ocean uh, to in, uh, by our house. And our house was, was shaking, and uh, it was as though a great freight train was right outside my window. And I know, and I know what it's like to call on God in the midst of peril, but God heard us and he answered us. Our house shook, but it did not fall. Because there was somebody inside believing God, praying God, and, and God says, it's not your time, son. It's not your family's time. You and I have that right with God, and we have that kind of access with God. So whatever the Lord says about you, you should say, yes, I can. This, this, this phrase come, uh, comes from uh, a Spanish word, uh, a Spanish phrase, si se puede, si se puede, yes, you can. It's possible. You can do it. Yes, yes, you can do it. And Paul says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So we must live in this state of peacefulness. And so changing circumstances had no ability to alter Paul's peace, and neither should negative circumstances have the ability to shake you and cause you to doubt God's faithfulness, God's promises, which have been extended to you through Jesus Christ. So it does not matter what's going on uh, outside. What matters is what's going on inside. Is Jesus Christ inside? And that's what we want to share with you tonight. Paul uh, teaches us that Christ himself is our peace. In Ephesians 2.14, that's what he says, that he himself is our peace. And so we want you to know that Jesus himself is your peace. So peace is not uh, Jesus somehow massaging you, uh, uh, your, your muscles or your neck because you're tense. Jesus is peace inside. And so Paul had learned that. So he had learned by going through difficulty, going through uh, stonings, beatings, etc., uh, being shipwrecked. Uh, he had g gone through some things. So many of us have gone through things. We've all gone through things. But some of us haven't gone through things like, like we're going through now. At least I've never gone through it. And um, I'm now in my 70s, so I know that God is, is a faithful God. And just like he got me through the last thing, he will get me through this thing. And so we must know that. We must understand uh, that inner sufficiency that the Lord Jesus gives by giving himself. The, the Lord gave Paul this inner sufficiency that did not depend on Paul himself or from his self-life, but for, from Christ alone. So the inner sufficiency that you and I have comes from Christ alone. Christ dwelling in us. Christ the hope of glory. So if Christ, if Christ then is your sufficiency, uh, then you should be steady in the midst of every storm. Paul had come to understand that contentment had nothing to do with circumstances, whether they were adverse or, favor or unfavorable, de detrimental, injurious, or whether they were favorable, positive, agreeable. It did not matter. He, they had nothing to do with his contentment. His contentment was directly from Christ within. So when we talk, Paul says, I know how. I know how. I know how to be abased. I know how to abound. Uh, or rather, I've, uh, I know how. I know how. He had learned that. And what we mean, by, uh, he had learned that through practice. He had learned that through not rebelling when he had to go through something that was adverse, something that might be injurious, causing injury, something that was detrimental to his well-being. You have to go through some things. And uh, we all go through things. So I want you to, to be... Uh, be confident that the Lord Jesus, who has been with you in the past, is still with you now. I want you to know that. And so when we say how, this is what how means. It means in what, in, in what way or manner, by what means. So when he says, I know how, I, 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 I know how to be a base. In what manner? So in a godly manner, he, he could accept abasement. That is, to be humiliated or to humiliate to humiliate is not just someone coming against you with uh, 
verbose speech or, or slanderous language, but to humiliate is to humble yourself, to bring yourself under. And you bring yourself under, not the person or the thing that is, is causing that, that, but you bring yourself under Christ. You and I can be a base, come low, through Christ alone, because the human psyche, the, the, the self-life doesn't like that. That the self-life in all of us wants to bow up when somebody comes against us. And even if we are cowardly in our self-life, then we are waiting to sneak up on you. Yes, that's the way the human condition is. But Paul is talking about to humiliate, that is, a proper condition of the heart, to bring low, to humble himself. He knew how to humble himself. He knew how to be abased. He, he knew how to be brought low, to live a humble life, to live a lowly life in both condition and in heart, outwardly and inwardly. And that ability came through the indwelling Jesus Christ. That's why we love Jesus so much, because Jesus, Jesus has done for us what no one else has ever done. He has done for us what no one could ever do. And so what we say to Jesus, whenever he tells us to go through something, we say, yes, we can. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Yes, I can, Jesus. Thank you. But through him, only through him. So Paul goes on to say, I know how to abound. Now, most of us, we, we understand um, uh, how to uh, uh, base in, 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 a, in one regard, at least, at least conditionally. We know how to do that. I know how to abound. Abound is this Greek word that means to superabound in both quantity and quality. So I know how to go to be in excess. That word abound means to be in excess. I know how to have more than enough. Uh, I'm able to superabound, to excel, to uh, be abundantly blessed, to be better, uh, to have enough and to spare, to exceed, excel, to increase. He said, I know that. And so, the, and so the, the, the Lord wanted the apostle to know how to be, be brought low and how to abound, to do extraordinarily well. The Lord's in, instructions uh, are everywhere and in all things. So the Lord is, Lord's instructions for you is that you must be able to uh, be abased and to abound everywhere, in all things, in all conditions. Not just when the going is easy, but when the going gets rough. You don't get rough, you remain the same. And this is what God wants from us. So his instructions to us are everywhere and in all things. Not in some places, not in some things, but everywhere and in all things. Paul says, I have learned both to be full and to be hungry. I have learned to be full and hungry. I've learned what I have a capacity to do. I have a capacity to bring together two extremes, abasing and abounding. I, have, I, I span it from the lowest place to the highest place. I am still the same. And this is what God wants us to, to be. This is how he wants us to be. So in the midst of the storm, I am just like I am in the absence of the storm. I am the same in the midst of coronavirus as I am with the absence of coronavirus. That's what God wants. So Paul says, I've learned that I have a capacity to bring together two things that oppose poverty and prosperity. Poverty does not disturb my contentment, neither does prosperity. Prosperity does not go to my head. It doesn't make me think I am now elevated above others because of something material. And poverty does not cause me to question God or my calling. My lack does not cause me to despair. It does not depreciate my value to God or even to me, to myself. It does not depreciate my value. It does not diminish who I am in God's eyes. Nor does it diminish who I am in my own eyes. Because I know I am a child of God. I know that I am protected by God. In the midst of the storm, he says, I have learned both to abound and to suffer need. Wow. 
I have, how did he learn these things? These things were by the indwelling Christ. You and I talk Christianity, but we don't really know, know Christianity until we go through something. I've been giving God praise and thanksgiving recently because I've been praying for some things just about my personal growth in the Lord. And uh, I've been seeing it. I have wanted an accompanying, an accompaniment, and musicians understand accompaniment. I've wanted an accompaniment, uh, accompaniment of the Holy Spirit like never before. I wanted the Holy Spirit to be right there. He's my keyboard. The Holy Spirit is my guitar. The Holy Spirit is my drums. The Holy Spirit is my bass. The Holy Spirit is my voice. Everything. And boy, I've been seeing it in a mighty way. And you can too. You can live a life of contentment. That is being peaceful in every situation. Wow. So he says, I've learned both to abound and to suffer need. I've learned both to abound and to suffer need. I have learned that I have the ability to abound and to suffer. They are both in me. Not just, yeah, getting, 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 getting. You know, you don't have to go through that. If you have faith, you don't have to do that. You can have everything you need. If you've got faith, faith, faith. You know, that's just not the objective. If you have faith, you can also go through the lack. And sometimes it's a good thing to go through lack. So that you know that, hey, lack doesn't hold any terror for you. Oh, so this is what we want to know. In verse 12, the one I, I read, I want to read it in the King James Version because the King James Version brings a nuance. I, I always, almost always have to say to my, one of my brothers, I always tease him because he uses the King James Version. I said, man, we don't use that language. You know, so get, get a Bible where you, ha you have a language, a modern language. He always says, wait, he said, no. He said, I use the, the KJV because if you get a revelation, you know it came from God. <laughs> so let me read it. It's a beautiful uh, verse in the King James, verse 12. He says, I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound everywhere and in all things. Listen, I am instructed. He doesn't use the word learned. He says, I am instructed to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. And so when I did my study of this, I thought, why didn't the King James use learned, like the New King James and like the ESV and other versions? But, but there is a nuance of difference. And uh, I love it because instructed is a Greek word, uh, I think it's pronounced mueo, mueo, M-U-E-O, mueo. It means to initiate into the mysteries, to teach fully, to instruct, to accustom one to a thing, to get somebody accustomed to something, to give one an intimate acquaintance with a thing. And, and also, the way this reads uh, in, in verse 12 in the King James Version, what it reads, and it, even in, the, in the, the other versions that I use, but what it means is the action is done by somebody else, and it falls on me. Wow. So that God then has done something. He has done something for you. He has given you some instructions that fell on you. And you became the uh, beneficiary of this. You were initiated by going through things into a place where you could receive and understand the revelation of God. Wow. So then... Mm, you and I who have been going through things, we now understand I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Let, let me let me go to that. That is the conclusion of the matter. Paul, Paul after uh, going through things and, and knowing God's faithfulness in trouble, knowing God's faithfulness with the absence of trouble, he says, he concludes, he says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. In other words, Christ who empowers me, Christ who enables me, Christ who increases my strength, Christ who makes me strong. I can do all things through that one. So you can see that the doer is Jesus and the recipient is Paul. And the same with you. He is not a respecter of persons. Paul says to us that... God, He, God, would grant you, according to the riches of His glory, to be strengthened with might through His Spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And what He is saying is, when you believe, you receive. 
But I want to say to you as I draw to a conclusion, you are now living under the providential care of the Lord. So the providential care of the Lord, the providence of the Lord is His care, His love for you. Providence, what does that mean? It means foresight. It means prudent anticipation. It means divine foresight. And it means also precaution and foreknowledge to look ahead, to prepare, to supply. And it comes from two words uh, in the Latin. It comes from pro, which means ahead. And it comes from videre, videre, to see. So to see ahead. It, it means that God sees everything. So therefore he can see ahead. God sees everything that will ever happen to you. That's why he's God. And so in, in that way, there's nothing that can happen to you that God hasn't already seen. I wanted to finally read Colossians chapter 1 verses 9 through 13. And just bless your heart. It says, for this reason, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work and increasing and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might, according to his glorious power, for all patience and long suffering with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us, who has qualified you to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has delivered us, he has delivered you from the power of darkness and conveyed you, conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love. So Paul says, he concludes the matter, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Father, bless everyone who has heard this word. I pray that it has been inculcated into their hearts by the Holy Spirit. Thank you so much in Jesus' name.